So here we are in an ancient Jewish settlement just south of Hebron in what is now the West Bank in the southern Hebron hills just on the edge of the Judean desert in ancient Susia. Here in Susia we find the remains of a Jewish town dating back almost 2,000 years. You must think, well, it's a, yeah, it's a nice place. It's, a, it's some nice evidence of some historical Jewish communities. But there's something of great interest for us being here today because this, this community has all the usual stuff, the houses and everything, and a synagogue. But what is in the synagogue may well shock you, but it's pretty unknown to the general public just the significance of what we can find here in the synagogue. Let's have a look. So this is Aramaic, I believe, and it translates to remembered for good, Yeshua, the comforter, martyr witness. How amazing is this? In a synagogue from the year 300 to 400, probably around 350, just a few generations after the apostles and disciples and Jesus himself, just a few hundred years, we've got a messianic synagogue calling Jesus the comforter, martyr, witness, remembered for good, in a synagogue, in an ancient synagogue. And then over this side, we have a scene that is, looks very similar to the book of Revelation, a scene from the book of Revelation. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Here we see the temple flanked by two menorah and two olive trees. Surely this is a reference to the scene in the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth. The two lambs could well represent the morning and evening Chigaga offerings at the temple in Jerusalem. In the early Judaism of the first centuries, the Chigaga offering was often called the Pesach, Passover lamb, along with the Pesach, killed and eaten in the Seder meal, the Passover meal. Wow, that is incredible. So what essentially, what it's saying on, on this description of this website is that we have the two menorah, the book of Revelation chapter 11, uh, the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth with the, the temple, the seat, the beamer seat, judgment seat, the two olive trees right on the far sides and the two lambs, the Passover lamb. Hallelujah. That's, it's like the Lord of the earth, you know, <laughs> that scene from the book of Revelation. Wow and the Passover lamb who, you know, the lamb who died for our sins. <sighs> In this synagogue from the year 350. 
The combination of both this image before the Bema and the mosaic Yeshua inscription make compelling evidence for this being the first synagogue discovered in Israel within which believers in the Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, met and worshipped. Incredible stuff. Just incredible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for revealing this evidence that shows us that within a few generations of the apostles, we had believers in Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, meeting in what looks to be a messianic synagogue here south of Hebron. This was only a few generations from the Apostle John and the disciples, the other apostles, and Jesus Christ himself. Only a few hundred years, maybe three or four generations from the time of Jesus Christ. And this is something that a local tour guide who is a believer told me as speculation, um, that this could well be a group of believers who in some way were related to or involved with uh, the Apostle John because of the language used in Yeshua our Comforter. And they've got the Aramaic, which mentions the name Yeshua very clearly, very clearly the name Yeshua, very clear, without doubt. But it's either argued away by archaeologists, it's overlooked, or it's generally hidden. So I just encourage you to, um, to understand that there's many things due to politics and differences of opinion, agendas, secularism, atheism, worship of science, um, all of these, you know, religious tensions, all of these things can contribute to the covering up of information um, that, you know, maybe all the history that we are told is not packaged as pure truth and so then you start to doubt the bible you start to doubt that these things are real and this you know what the bible says is real but i encourage you to believe the bible above anything that you're told in secular education that have agendas um, because it's proven time and time again the more that is uncovered in israel the more archaeology that's uncovered across the world when you really look at it for what it is you can see that it actually shows what a time and again that the bible has always been true let's cling on to the only one who can save our souls the lord jesus christ as we trust in his blood in his sacrifice to save us from our sins the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world this is who we trust in. This is obviously who some people in this Jewish community trusted in. And one day soon he will return to destroy the works of the Antichrist and the false religion, the false prophets. So let's uh, submit our lives and submit ourselves unto the Lord Jesus Christ, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. All praise to him for his kingdom and his glory through us on this earth. God bless you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.